Hey, Scott Wilkinson here, Director of Content at AVS Forum. I'm here with David Bott, the founder of AVS, and Dan Shinazi, the Senior Manager of Product Planning at Samsung for televisions, and we're talking 4K, or should we say UHD? Ultra high def, that's right, yeah. Now, Samsung, of course, is one of the major players in that market. We've already got a bunch of TVs coming out. Um, any announcements here at the show? Uh, no, no specific announcements at the show, but uh, we're going to join your panel tomorrow, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, ultra high definition and our perspective on the industry. Now, as we've talked about in a couple of other interviews, it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem, right? You've got the displays and you've got the content. And which one will come first? Well, it seems the displays are coming first. But that's before we even have all of the technical parameters worked out for the content. Like, for example, bit depth, frame rate, uh, color gamut, uh, HDMI 2.0. Uh, Samsung has come up with, I think, a really good solution to that problem. Tell us about it. Sure. So our approach, uh, we understand and we participate in a lot of these standards activities. So we're, we're quite knowledgeable about all the standards that are evolving. And we don't want our customers left in the dark, and uh, rightfully so, after that kind of investment uh, in a premium product. Uh, so our solution is to offer all of the connectivity. It, it's outboarded. So we offer what we call a One Connect box. And the One Connect box has your, your HDMI interface, uh, also has your main processor. Um, so as the standards evolve, such as HDMI 2.0, uh, we, can, we can swap out uh, that uh, One Connect box and customer can enjoy all of the latest innovations. And will that also allow you to, uh, for example, accept uh, 2160p at 60 frames when that becomes available, presuming it becomes available? Uh, absolutely, that's, uh, that's the uh, so-called AKA HDMI 2.0, uh, which is, uh, as I understand, not the, it's not yet the official name, but it's a candidate name uh, for the next generation HDMI. And uh, I think that part was publicly announced, that it will, so it will double the frame rate I'm sorry, yeah, it'll double the bandwidth, uh, which, is, which will be uh, 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 60, uh, 20, yeah, 60 hertz. Now, I've heard it said that by some that why, what's 60, what, 60 hertz, 60 frames per second, not even that important. Movies are at 24, they probably will stay there. It might go to 48, maybe to 60, but that's somewhere down the line. Uh, how important really is it, do you think? Uh, for fast motion, it is important, especially in sports. So uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna play a point. It's gonna play a part in the uh, in the ecosystem. And uh, I, I, you know, personally, if I were a consumer and looking for uh, the latest and greatest TV, and uh, I knew that uh, you know, 60 frames per second is just on the horizon, I, I wouldn't want to be left in the dark. Um. Where, what, what's your hit on the, the whole content delivery system? I mean, we could have a new Blu-ray standard, possibly. I understand they're meeting in Macau this week to, con to consider whether or not to consider <laughs> uh, creating a 4K or a UHD standard. Or do you think it's more likely that we'll get it by uh, internet delivery and, and uh, downloading and streaming? So I think uh, uh, it's going to come in many ways. So I, I, I'm very optimistic that the, um, uh, the, they call it FEST, that's the Feature, Enhance, Feature Enhancement Standards Task Force that's meeting in Macau this week. Um, uh, I guess their, their work is confidential, but we know that they're working on, uh, or at least considering, uh, a 4K standard, an optical standard. So I'm, I'm relatively confident that, uh, you know, that will, uh, uh, they'll, they'll at least move the project forward. Um, so that's one possibility. So I think we will see an optical standard at some point in time. Uh, we will also see streaming at some point in time. And that's going to be made possible uh, by HEVC. HEVC being the uh, uh, super efficient compression uh, scheme that's coming out. Otherwise known as H.265. That's right, H.265. So uh, what they're saying is that presents a, somewhere between a 40 and 50% efficiency. Uh, so that will still going to be a little bit of a challenge, but that uh, with, with HEVC, you possibly could stream 4K. But at a pretty low bandwidth, and I would, have, I would guess you might get compression artifacts or, or other problems streaming at such a low bandwidth. Well, I guess it all depends on your, your internet connection. Uh, some people with fiber to their home uh, perhaps can do a little bit better. But that also, uh, it also, yeah, it also opens up the, you know, the uh, possibility of um, you know, a buffering and then uh, and then a playback or, or storage as well. 
going back to your panels and interchangeable box, um, what was the name of that? That was uh, one one connect. One, yeah. Okay, so one you got your one connect box, which basically allows you to change out the brain, if you will, which is great. So in regards to the panel then, how do you know that the panel itself is going to accept what you put in the box? Are the panels built to accept up to 120 refresh rate um, if you put it in? Or so you got the box, but you got a panel, but the panel's got specs too. So for example, the panel will have a native color gamut. And if the color gamut of, of uh, UHD is widened, how will you deal with that? Well, we're obviously, we'll always be at the limitation of the panel, but the, uh, uh, the, the, the color gamut is quite wide, and, and some of the proposals, what you're seeing for color gamut, uh, you're going you're gonna to find it hard-pressed for any display other than laser-based to possibly reproduce some of the wide color. Uh, so it, it's, it's going to be a challenge for any, you know, any type of uh, LCD-based product. What, what is the bit depth, then, in your color of your panel? Um, I, I don't think we publicly stated, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we don't want to put you on the spot. But it's, but it's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything was off the record, you know. So. Um, one question regarding panels is: uh, Samsung has an 85 inch, of course, uh, and also now a 55 and a 65, right? Uh, I mean, new announcements. Uh, they haven't. Uh, they haven't. Have not actually debuted in stores, but publicly announced. It has been publicly announced. My question for you is, what is the advantage of 4K at a panel size that we would consider perhaps relatively small? I mean, 6, 55, 65 used to be huge, but now it's not considered huge. 55, 50 inch TV, 55 inch TV, that's a more, very common size. Is there really any advantage to, to UHD at that size? Uh, there is. If you you have to look a little bit beyond just the resolution. So uh, if you look beyond resolution, uh, and there's a resolution story there as well, where you can you can actually uh, sit closer to the display without seeing any pixel artifacts. But putting aside the resolution enhancement, um, you know, there's the wider color gamut, the the the, the higher bit depth. I mean, there's other things that are coming uh, as well. So it, if you look at all of those things, uh, it tells a good story. There's an there is an advantage to that as well. Okay. Well, especially if you say the color gamut and stuff is coming, because right now I, I tend to agree but disagree that on a small panel, you're not going to see the benefit for the most consumer unless you can see a dynamic change. In that case, the color gamut, um, where you can visually see a difference. Um, the pixel structure, you're right. You're not going to see because it's too close together as it is, depending on the, the average sitting living room. You know, you're talking about eight, ten feet away. So you're not going to never see it. It wouldn't be just a resolution story at that at that particular. Thing. And I think it, I think in general, one thing one thing we're learning here is that it that Alt UHD is not only about resolution. There are a lot of other issues that we need to to be considering in a holistic view. Right, and I agree, and that's why I agree with your approach on the changeable box. Um, you know, because as we learned in the past with Samsung, which AVS has had a great re re relationship with in the past, and still do, that. When you guys release a product and AVS members might tell you there's something wrong, a, Samsung has always stood behind the end consumer. And that's always been great. And we appreciate that. And as a site, you know, it goes a long way you know, for, for the members of a site to also have knowing that Samsung is watching and reading and making adjustments. With this new box you know, approach, you can actually make that in more in real time, if you will, or even upgradable if you download new firmware or what have you. So I, I give you guys uh, good kudos for that. So we, we've all, we've always supported for years now. We've supported our TV with firmware. Um, so we will always offer firmware to to address even with the, even with the existing hardware, uh, new new features uh, as best we can. But there'll, there'll be some some enhancements that will require new hardware. You know, so so that's again the purpose of the uh, of the One Connect box. I would, I would rather change a box than have to change a card on the back of a television. <laughs> that's our approach. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any news from Samsung regarding content? I mean, Blu-ray upscaling Blu-ray players or media streamers, media boxes, anything like that? Um, uh, not at the show, but um, you know, we are looking at all the different options. So, like, as I said, we you know we have H.265. Uh, we will support H.265. Uh, so that opens up, you know, that opens up a lot of avenue um, avenues. Um, I'm not sure you had a chance to go to NCTA uh, the, two weeks ago. Uh, Comcast showed, uh, it's a cable show uh, for industry, and uh, Comcast showed uh, 
uh, 4K transmission through plant. It was a concept, and they, you know, they just wanted to show uh, uh, the technical capability of it. And so they actually transmitted it through their their plant. their plant as if it was going out to the home. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, it was a it was a control test, but to show, hey, this is we're working on this. It's coming. Did you see it? Did it look any good? It, it looked terrific. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.